here we are at the Haynes Motor Museum, International Motor Museum. We're actually in a room, I guess it's called the Red Room, where every one of these cars is a shade of red. And it's just such a weird sight to see. I mean, when I stepped in here, I was like, what, what's going on here, you know? Like, it, it's so curated, it's so cool. And they're all like really interesting cars. They're all pretty much either sports well, there's cars some or- some random stuff as well. There's like an Alpha Spider over there that's worth a couple of thousand pounds, but then you've got like a Facel Vega and a Marcos kit car and a Maserati and yeah, AC Frua. There's some real random stuff of big value, but then- yeah, There's even a 240Z or they call it a, a 240Z Samurai here. Look at this thing. So it's a real low mileage original car. And the reason why we come to the Haynes Motor Museum is because like everyone had a Haynes manual for their car. But 21 years ago, when I was just starting out as a journalist, there's a magazine in the UK called Street Machine and Haynes Motor Museum very kindly offered to get some cars out of the museum onto the test track for us to drive around and have some fun with. And this particular Firebird, uh, we took it out on the track and the editor at the time was trying to get it sideways out of a corner. Somebody came out from the museum and was like, can you, can you just not do that? And we were like, oh, really sorry, really sorry. This Well, normally we'd be down with that, but this has done like 6,000 original miles. It's on its original tires. It's a one owner car and we kind of like it if we kept it that way. So I haven't, I haven't seen this car since then. This is 21 years ago when I first started out. They actually have these cars in perfect condition. Most of them run and they actually move these around. They cycle them through their other cars that they have stored back here. We've only seen a little bit of it. I'm kind of curious to see what this place has. I really like how this is laid out in that it's not so much that it's curated exhibitions, it's more so focused on the car and there's so many cars here, like they pack them in. If you bought a Haynes manual, this is a separate charity now, but essentially this is born out of the passion that Haynes had for their manuals and all that sort of stuff. So. Before the internet, <laughs> yeah. to learn how to fix a car, you actually yeah. had to buy a manual. And I had a Haynes manual for all of my cars before the forums really kind of took off. Quarter of a mile away. Right. They nope. took those cars apart, took all the photos, and that, your manual now in LA, that's where it came from. Which blew my mind to see how much detail and how much effort they went into to making really very well lit black and white photos yeah, yeah. to kind of show you how to take it apart, how to change this, how to change that. It's unbelievable. I still have the one for my 240Z and it's so sooty and it's so oily because I've used it over the years, you know, but it's kind of cool. Like that's just how you learn how to fix your car before, you know, there's just no other way to know. There was about five or six guys in the workshop, I, as I remember, because I did a couple of manuals with them that they took apart every car, put it all back together, and then just put it back on the market. So they'd buy the car, take it all apart, and then sell it again. So there's somebody out there driving around in a car that will be taken apart by Haynes and put back together and then made into a book that then read by tens of thousands of people. It's not one of those situations where you take something apart and you put it back together and there's a couple bolts left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, they definitely uh, avoid that. Today we're really stoked to announce that we finally have children's gear. That's right, lace your kid up in the flyest, hardest automotive gear on the planet. You ever walk around a car meet with your kid thinking to yourself, well, my kid looks like a nerd. Well, no more, because now Hoonigan is outfitting kids. Do you have a child? Is your child not an honor student? Are you a child looking after children? Do you have your mom's credit card available? You tired of having to lug your life through JC Nordstrom's to buy whack-ass children's gear? Save valuable wrench time on that shit box by simply shopping for your kids at our website. And it's a hell of a lot better than getting solicited by phone cover case salespeople at kiosk. What is a kiosk anyway? Why do they exist? Who the hell even buys that shit? Anyway, youth gear, available at hoonigan.com. Get yours today. This thing is so weird, okay? So it's like cut out. So the engine is just for display, but it still drives and runs. It's still a functioning car. So you could see the pistons and everything. 
So if you're wondering why, or if you're wondering how it still runs and drives, it actually has an engine in the back. It has like a Volkswagen engine. <laughs> what kind of badge is this? It's called being a baller. <laughs> what the? <laughs> we got like a very, very clean NS6 here. Oh, so cool. <gasps> Coolest car in the, in the world. Well, <laughs> the, the coolest wait, a minute, car in the wait a minute, wait a minute. How is it possible? That, Yo, check, check out these exhaust pipes though. How is it possible that the tires are above the body? Is this your favorite car of the museum? That's the, it's my favorite car, period. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face. <laughs> I feel like if wait, was, why are the seats backwards? <laughs> oh, it's a driving sim. Oh, it's a driving sim. Yeah, it's not a so real cool. car. This is GT4. It's rare. Yeah. Really? What? I want to save this. Make an offer. We can ship it out. It's right hand drive. It's too new. It's too new. It's under 25 years old. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I like these. Turbo all wheel drive. We're actually at the Haynes Motor Museum restoration shop. And this is where they actually maintain all of the museum cars. And what I didn't know is they actually have customers come in and they just maintain regular old school cars. So it's an open shop because they've got all these skills right and there's lots of people who have broken down old cars and need restoring. So you can bring them here and this is a storage facility for that. So yeah, proper old variety of stuff. I'm. Uh, very envious of having a garage like this. For me, it's interesting to see the variety of cars that they restore here. Anything goes. I mean, it could be Japanese cars, it could be British cars, well, it could be American cars even. 1903 Dirac, I think we saw at the start there, then there's like a 1950s Bristol, then there's some 60s, 70s stuff, there's Land Rovers outside. Yeah, I guess if you've got the skills, you can apply into everything, right? According to Brad, who's the shop manager, he has customers all over the world. People ship their cars, even from the US, just to get restored here because they have such a database of knowledge and pictures and references to restore some of these cars to brand new. In fact, we actually saw some of these cars that are getting shipped back to the US from being restored. My favorite part, actually, was to see how they make these metal body panels and just parts from raw metal. Yeah, yeah uh, a flat sheet of alloy or steel, and because you, yeah. It, just it, hand formed, and it takes thousands of hours to build some of these cars. For example, um, they have that Aston Martin in there that they've put already a thousand hours into. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think I've, Spent a thousand hours on doing anything. <laughs> like, I, just, I was just trying to think the exact same thing. I've probably not spent a thousand hours driving one of my cars, let alone <laughs> actually working on it to get it to the point where you could drive it. If you ever picked up a Haynes manual, if you ever used one, if you ever got one secondhand off a buddy, the money that originally was made from selling those mm -hmm. went into buying cars to build this collection <laughs> to then have us walk around and look it's, at it. So, that's so cool because yeah. in the US, I never actually realized where the manuals came from. You go to any auto parts store and you can find a whole rack of those manuals for pretty much all types of cars. The fact that the money is used to maintain and this buy museum. more old cars to yeah, fix. It's exactly. Amazing. It's a cycle, right? It's like ultimate recycling. Yeah. Did they not learn from stripping them down and realizing how badly they break? That's so cool. Yeah. yeah, so thank you so much to the Haynes Motor Museum for letting us check out your Two place awesome place so if you're in the uk if you're on holiday or if you're on vacation you have to make a stop here if you're a car guy we visited haynes on our holiday yeah. what a lovely time we had oh this is so much fun why didn't you guys lean at each other we are <laughs> we are <laughs>